Hi, I'm Tom Marks with the Marks Law Firm in Orlando, Florida, and welcome to the Healthy Family Law Attorney. We have a special guest today on the uh, channel, and she has the distinction of being the first guest that I have invited back to be on the channel another time. So she is the first second appearance on the Healthy Family Law Attorney. Hi, Julie, how are you? Good morning, Tom, I'm great, how are you? I'm doing great. So last time you and I talked about um, triumph over tragedy, and you talked about what happened with your marriage and divorce and how you were unrepresented by counsel and you walked away with barely the shirt on your back, you had to start all over. And you started from a part-time bank teller at um, a local bank to now where you are as the number two person at a national bank, Seacoast Bank, um, an eight plus billion dollar bank. And so it was triumph over tragedy. Uh, today we're gonna talk, our title is uh, Triumph Over Tragedy Part Two. And that is because although you had further triumph, you got remarried, married the love of your life and had a great marriage, second marriage, and had your first child. Her name is Faith. But then you had um, another tragedy. Your husband died in a freak accident at a young age and you were left with a special needs child as a single mother. And so now you're having to rebuild again and figure it all out. So we wanna provide hope and help to our audience. Uh, my purpose is because I believe families matter. I wanna provide hope and help to families to successfully navigate the process in a healthy way. So Julie, I know you're gonna help us with that, with that today because your story is amazing. It's further triumph over tragedy. So tell us what happened there. You lost your husband, you're raising now a special needs child, you're working full time. How did you accomplish all that? Well, they say it takes a village to raise any child. Certainly it takes a very special village to raise a special needs child. And in the face of what was a shocking set of circumstances with the death of my husband, just four months after my baby was born, I was faced with having to build a lot of things from the ground up. And it really required me to reach out and ask for a lot of help and seek resources across a number of different platforms to help me get through um, the situation I found myself in. So I know you had to do some early interventions. Um, tell us like what steps you had to go through to start the process of raising a special needs child on your own. Well, it really first started with just educating myself about what Down syndrome is and what it's not and what does it mean for the potential prognosis of any child that's born with that genetic disorder. I didn't really have a lot of direction from the, her then pediatrician. He pretty much called me over the phone and said, your daughter has Down syndrome and I'll put you in touch with another parent that has a child with Down syndrome and uh, they'll help you out. So I was kind of at ground zero. And the wonderful thing, Tom, that I had is just I'm blessed with some amazing parents. And I remember the phone call I had with my mom and she said, we're going to figure it out. Together, we're just going to figure it out. And so we started doing a ton of research and it started with getting really an assessment of where Faith was and where she could potentially go. And the interesting thing was my first assessment from a genetic doctor locally was that uh, a good goal would be for her to sit up and they did not expect her to walk or run or be able to speak or a number of different things. And I just chose to ignore that and lean into my big faith and pray about it. And uh, lots to talk about on the channel today about who she's become and uh, all the things in front of us today. Right, because I know that she was nonverbal and she wasn't walking and, it, it, and what the doctors were telling you was, I'm sure, discouraging, but you didn't give up. And that's what's great about you. And um, I've known you for years and we have 
quite a, um, a history and I've, I've learned a lot and I've met Faith. So, um, so let's talk about, you said something about it takes a village and I know you had like an A, B, C, D team. Tell us what that was like. So, you know, as I had to think about going back to work and becoming the only breadwinner for the family, I had to surround myself with people that could help me care for my daughter, but also help support all of the therapeutic early interventions that needed to happen um, from the time she was born and, and still happen today. And so, you know, at that time, I started with uh, my own immediate family and friends and the network that I had. Uh, seeking their support. And then I had to expand that well beyond family because as much as my family is amazing, I wanted them to be able to enjoy faith and her not to become, you know, just a job. And so I reached out um, through some friends that had used um, professional nanny services at the time and brought in a nanny into the environment. And over time, as she began to get older, we brought in um, uh, teachers and other therapists that could help support her development. And then I can tell you that it took all of us working together uh, every day with specific strategies and therapies from log rolling on the floor and creeping and crawling all, all over the house and getting on the floor and, and talking to her and getting her to respond. And ultimately, a team of doctors that helped us understand what other things we needed to do uh, to support her from whether or not she could hear to whether or not she was going to speak and using American Sign Language as our former primary form of communication. So lots of things, but the village was the beginning uh, and the village continues to evolve over time as faith continues to grow and develop every day. Right. And I'm sure you learned over time um, all the, the changes. Um, as I tell clients, uh, one thing that I can guarantee, and I really can't guarantee much in a family law case exactly what's going to happen, but one thing I can guarantee is that things will change. So when things changed with faith, how did you make those recalibrations? So it really um, is about better understanding what was important to her success. And so as she continues to change and she changes every single day, I have to keep some level of consistency because that's important to her and that brings success to her. But I also, for my own peace of mind, had to establish a lot of scheduling just so that I could visualize and get my head and my heart around all that was in front of us. At one point, Faith was in eight different therapies at once. And so um, as she continued to move forward, there were times when I had to increase or decrease the number of times she was in therapy, bring in more support and help to get that done, and then ultimately just rely on the basics, right? So a calendar, both in written and in digital, um, sharing that with others, reminding and telling faith of the schedule, because as long as she understands the schedule, and she can buy into the schedule, and we had consistency around that, that helped. But you just have to remain flexible. It's, it's required when you're raising children, but it's certainly required when you're raising special needs children, because the least little thing can cause a big hiccup. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure. So how did you keep that all organized? I know you had to make plans uh, for everything in Faith's life. So how do you accomplish all that? Well, part of it was um, keeping me mentally and emotionally healthy. So I maintained going to professional counseling on a consistent basis, and I made time for that, number one. Number two, I shared my calendar and my task list and the things that needed to get done with a large group of people, and then I divided and conquered the task so that it wasn't just me accomplishing everything. Because as a parent, you, you feel like you have the responsibility to do it all. And as a single parent, I, I just frankly couldn't do it all. And so it was about being vulnerable, sharing, um, asking for help, and then continuing to expand the village based on their expertise, their passions and desires to help. And then calibrating it again as to what was working best for faith. Right, right. Um, so. 
tell us about um, the significant um, life changes or significant developmental stages that uh, Faith has gone through. She's a teenager now, so you've been doing this for quite some time. Right. Well, you know, for me, the biggest life change uh, was before it all, you know, kind of all came into the parenting realm was just, I had to hire a lot of people to do a lot of things that my late husband did for me. And I didn't realize how much I should have appreciated um, while he was with me. Then the second thing as it relates to all the life events with faith, things that most parents take for granted, like her ability early on to creep and crawl and to eat just from a bottle was a challenge and learning how to use oral motor therapy to help her better position her mouth and her tongue so that she could eat effectively, uh, teaching her um, how to use American Sign Language so she wouldn't get frustrated when she couldn't talk to me in a normal fashion until she was four, learning what it was like to be without sleep. So really, even today, Faith is up two, three, sometimes four and five times in the middle of the night. And so learning how to uh, really manage my own health in that environment and then bringing in support when I needed it. So in the case of my life, I have a parent that are here. And so my dad is really taken on the role as, as her father and extended that to her. And so we have a couple of nights a week where mom or dad come over and stay the night just so that I can get some sleep. So I'm ready to go for the next day. Um, but Faith had to learn how to talk. She had to learn how to walk. She had to, potty training was very different than it is for normal parents. She still to this day cannot put herself to sleep. I have a routine that gets her to sleep every single night. And it's just our world. It's just a different world and it's okay. And I embrace that every day. Uh, and so um, I'm grateful for the blessings we have. And I've learned from the challenges that we've faced. Wow. I mean, I know for my clients, uh, the day-to-day challenges they face with their kids, especially teenagers, uh, can be very challenging. Obviously, uh, you raising uh, a special needs child on your own is even more challenging to some exponential degree that I don't know that I could even um, calculate or or explain. Uh, I know you can, but uh, T- tell us how did how did you struggle with making some of the choices you've had to? I, I know it had to be um, it had to be discouraging. You had to be really challenged um, to overcome going down the dark hole or whatever. So tell us about yeah. that, would you? Yeah, the the reality is um, when you have a, a picture of what life should look like or what you expect it to look like whether it's in a marriage or as a parent or who your child will become, you have to process through all those what ifs and expectations. Ultimately, there are still many days where I've had to face the the choice. Do I get, do I kind of go in the fetal position in the corner of the room or do I wake up and look for the opportunities and 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 the winds in front of me. And so what I always remember and put in the forefront, right, is the fact that, you know, I'm nothing without my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I am not a great parent um, by any means, and I need to uh, lean into my faith, but I also have to look for support. And so I found that and continue to find that with other parents that are walking the same journey or a portion of the journey that I share. So other special needs parents through resource groups and other things online and in person. And then I would just tell you that ultimately um, I spend a lot of time on my knees, praying for my daughter, praying for our health, praying for our life and how we can make an impact on others. And I remember that my story is just my story. Everyone has one. And there's so many other families that have a more unique or more difficult story and so I just count my blessings every day. And that's great. You know, I think that's so encouraging um, to our viewers that you say you're a normal parent and you've gone through a lot of struggles. <laughs> but if you can do that on your own, of course, creating this village, and I think that's encouraging and is a great suggestion for our audience, for parents that 
are going through a divorce and are going to be raising the kids as a single parent. Um, but that's encouraging that if you could do it with a special needs child, they can certainly do it with healthy children without those special needs. Um, Julie, I know that you mentioned the concept of having an abundance mentality versus having a scarcity mentality. Can you explain what that means? Sure. So uh, for me, you know, there's a lot of studies been done on that, but I, I would just say for me, it's about just choosing to focus on the positive. I, you know, I could go home every day and and tell you a story about what went wrong. Um, something, you know, something so minute when I think about it in perspective, but I just choose to find what was the great thing that happened. There's always something good that happened the day with Faith. So for her to complete a six, seven, eight word sentence without stopping is a triumph. Uh, I can ignore the fact that she had a, a, a behavioral breakdown. If I get a good long sentence and she tells me that she's in pain and what she needs me to do to support that pain management, for example, post-surgery, which was a big triumph this week, last night in particular, right? Um, I also would just tell you that I surround myself with abundant people, right? My mom always says, you know, birds of a feather flock together. And so you have to really choose to put yourself in, in and around people that are encouragement to your life and that you can be an encouragement to them. I think it's really having a, gra a gratitude attitude. And for me, you know, through loss and tragedy, God has taught me so many unbelievable lessons about it, what it means to surrender and that it isn't about me. It's about how I can impact lives through my story. And it's about what God has done to strengthen me and make me who I am today. And he just continues to stretch and grow me. And that for me um, is really, a, you know, really the focus. And I, and I think for me, I choose to see the possibilities and we just had to redefine what success looks like. No one was going to tell me what faith wasn't going to be. I chose to look for the things that she could be and is going to be. And she's proved the world wrong every single time because she's a tenacious child like any child is. And so I'm, I just choose to focus on those things. Yeah, and that's great. You know, it's so encouraging to me to have seen Faith grow and develop from a little girl to recently I saw her as a 14-year-old. Um, as I think most of my viewers know about me, I'm really into avocado trees. I have 25 avocado trees in my yard. I have 17 different varieties. And of course, you know that. And so I found out, obviously for you, that Faith loves avocados. So um, we had Faith come over. You and Faith and your parents came over for a little school field trip for Faith to go through my uh, avocado tree. Um, how did that go? Oh, it was amazing. We had so much fun and we are so grateful for the experience for Faith. It was an opportunity for her to have a tangible connection to her favorite food on the planet. So helping to understand how an avocado grows from seed into a tree, having the understanding of how it ripens and it doesn't start ripening as you taught us until you pull it from the tree and having her be able to touch and feel that and see the different types of avocados and experience that in God's creation was, it was amazing. The other thing for us was just having her be in a new environment and having her have to adapt to that environment, which is super helpful for her development. So, you know, her adjusting to Maverick, your dog, who she now talks about constantly and shows his picture to everyone. Her, you know, experiencing gizmo, uh, your son's uh, gecko or, or lizard or creature of some kind, and her seeing the snakes and her being at the lake and feeling the breeze in her at her face and being able to experience it in all that it can be from the dirt to the tree to the fruit. Um, it was just an amazing experience. And now when she eats them, she connects the dots with what has to happen for her to get that avocado turned into guacamole. So it was a wonderful experience. And those are the things that are life changing for a child like Faith. And those are things that we never take for granted because it was a, you know, a sort of a 
circular learning environment for her and for us. So thank you for that experience. Well, for my wife and I, it was um, really filled our hearts to see how much faith has grown. I mean, honestly, she's a very high functioning young lady. And I was really surprised how much she had grown, how verbal she is, how intelligent she is. And it was also really gratifying to meet your parents and and to really get to know them better and to see how they have been so much a part of Faith's journey and her growth and development. And I know you guys uh, take those weekends as family time. And and so I was glad to see that you guys came over and got to sample. I think I had three uh, t- three varieties of avocados on the trees at that when you were over uh, half a choquette and a lula. So it was it's kind of fun to let other people experience uh, different varieties. Mm-hmm. It was it was wonderful and Faith is still talking about the different types and looking for the different types in the store like Mr. Tom and Miss Linda have at their home and of course uh, those are harder to find when you go to the grocery store. They're not as, as good as the ones that you grow. So we had a great time. Thank you. Yeah, it was super fun. So last time you were on the channel, you gave us a healthy tip. We'll see if you can come up with number two because no one before has come up with two healthy tips, um, but you're on the spot. <laughs> so make it happen. Okay. Well, I would just say every day has a challenge and every day has a triumph. You have to look for it and celebrate it and celebrate it in a major way. So the smallest things in my life are hugely celebrated and that celebration brings joy into your soul. And then that's something that you can give back out into the universe. And so I feel like that's my tip for the day. And don't ever forget to lean into others who are walking your path and learn from them so that you remind yourself that you're not alone. That's great. You know, I would tell my audience, um, Julie is one of the most positive people I've ever met and despite her circumstances. And it shows me that we can choose to be overcoming. We can choose to have a positive attitude no matter what our circumstances. One of my favorite um, sayings or phrases is life is 90% attitude and 10% what happens to you. So we can always choose our attitude. And I know that Julie's story what has is and has been so encouraging to me. And I hope it's been encouraging to you and gives you some motivation. Um, if you've enjoyed this, if you've liked this um, interview today, I would love it if you would hit that like button subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss any videos. Uh, We are still posting new interviews every Friday and new legal content every Wednesday. So thank you for being part of the channel today. Julie, thank you so much for being on a second time. My pleasure, Tom. Thanks for having me. Yeah, always great to see you. And thanks, everyone. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.